In this video, we're going to be discussing estimating the sum of a series. Note that we've mentioned that in general, it's quite difficult to come up with a formula for um, Sn, and therefore it's often challenging to actually figure out the sum of, a, of the series, um, except in some special cases like with telescoping series where we have a nice way to figure out the formula for Sn, or with geometric series um, where we have a formula for the sum. So in general, it's, it's a pretty difficult problem, so it's useful to be able to have ways to estimate the sum of a series. And here we're going we're to be talking about a way to um, estimate the sum of a series when our series meets the conditions for the integral test. So suppose that we know that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n converges. Of course, we only want to talk about estimating the sum if we have a convergent series to start with. So let's say that this series converges by the integral test, which means that we have a function f of x where f of n equals a sub n is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1. And our goal is to find an approximation to the sum of that series. So to help us think about um, the ideas of, of estimating the sum, we want to just start by considering an example. So I have a sum here from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the fourth. So this would meet the conditions of the integral test. We already know that this is a convergent series here. Okay, we know it in fact converges by the, by the p-series test. Okay, since p is equal to four here, which is definitely bigger than one. Um, so let's say I wanted to approximate the sum of this particular series. Well, one way to get an approximation um, is going to be just to add up the first couple of terms. So um, one over one to the fourth, plus one over two to the fourth, all the way up to um, n to the fourth. Okay, would give us an approximation. Okay, would approximate the sum s um, for any n. Okay, of course, as n is bigger and bigger, we're going to get better and better approximations, but that's very time consuming here. So we might ask ourselves, well, how good would an approximation that just uses a couple of terms be? So let's say, for example, how good would the approximation 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 4th plus 1 over 3 to the 4th b. Okay, so what if I just wanted to use the first three terms? Um, how close would that be to the actual value? So I want to be able to say something about um, the error. In other words, what would the difference be, or what could I say about maybe some bound on the difference between this estimate and the actual sum? So we'd like to know, um, you know, what's the error? something about what s minus this approximation would be, okay? And that brings us to our um, next terminology here, which is called the remainder. So the remainder would be the difference between s and an estimate of s using the first n terms, okay? So let's see, I said what's the error, what would this thing be? Um, what we'll want to do is we'll need to estimate the size okay, of the error. How big is that error? And that error is called the remainder. So sometimes you'll hear us use error and remainder um, interchangeably. Okay, so let's get to the, the definition here of remainder. So the remainder is R n equals s minus s n. Okay, so it's the difference between the sum of the series, okay, and the nth partial sum. In other words, the sum of the first n terms. Okay, notice that um, S would be equal to A1 plus A2 plus A3, etc. SN would be equal to A1 plus A2 all the way up to AN. So S minus SN, okay, would be those terms starting from N plus 1, okay, all the way out to um, infinity, okay. Um, in words, again, we'll, we'll say that RN is the error 
made when estimating S by Sn. Okay, and what our next theorem is going to tell us, this integral estimation theorem, is some kind of bounds on this error. Okay, so let's see, before I had said um, what's the error, what's this, this difference going to be? Well, we're not going to figure out what the exact difference is, of course, but we're going to be able to get some kind of bounds on that difference to be able to say um, that our error could be no bigger than something if we used a certain estimate. So that gives us um, a good idea of um, how we could approximate the value of our sum. So let's look at this integral estimation theorem, okay, which is going to make use of our remainders. So the idea for figuring out how we're going to get some bounds on the, the remainder involves comparing um, some areas of rectangles. Okay, remember like in our introduction when we sort of introduced the idea behind the integral test to begin with, we were looking at Riemann sums, an area under the curve. Um, that's how we got a connection between an infinite sum and our, our improper integral. We're going to look at a, a similar um, idea here. So we're going to be comparing areas of rectangles. So let's see how this is going to look. So the conditions of the theorem involve that our function meets the conditions of the integral test. So let's suppose that f here is continuous, positive, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to n, so in other words, on the inf uh, interval from n to infinity, okay? And, of course, we're talking about approximating a sum, so I need to have that sum be a convergent sum, so the sum of a n converges, okay? So, if our remainder is s minus s n, then what is it that we can say is true, okay? Well, remember that we said Rn here um, was equal to a n plus 1 plus a n plus 2, etc. Okay, like what we had up here. So when we do s minus s n, we subtract off the first n term. So we're just left with all our terms starting at n plus 1. Okay, so that's what I have for Rn. So let's see how I can take that sum and relate it to a Riemann sum that would be something under our curve. Um, y equals f of x, okay? So notice that if I take a right endpoint Riemann sum, what's going to happen? Okay, so we're, we were looking at the uh, interval from n to infinity, okay? If I um, take right endpoints here, maybe I'll use a different color, um, Notice that the area of that first rectangle would be 1 times n plus 1, so that would be a n plus 1. The next rectangle with right end points here would be um, f of, let's see, n plus 2, or a n plus 2 times 1, okay? We could keep going like this, 10 plus 3, etc. But we notice that that's giving us an underestimate of the area under the curve from n to infinity. So we notice that this here is going to be less than or equal to the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx. So that gives us an upper bound on our error, okay? Well, we'd also like to have a lower bound. So what if we did the left endpoint Riemann sum, okay, trying to again see how Rn here might be related to some Riemann sum using left endpoints. Okay, so let me draw another picture here. Again, going from n um, all the way off to infinity. Okay, taking each interval and now using left endpoints. Okay, but I'm going to start with n plus 1 because I want um, my Riemann sum here to equal a n plus 1 plus a n plus 2. So we start here. Okay, and notice if I'm using left endpoints, I'm getting an overestimate. Okay, so notice that this sum here of a n plus 1, okay, which would be the area of this first rectangle, a n plus 2, the area of the second one, etc., that's going to be bigger than or equal to an integral from n plus 1 
to infinity of f of x dx. Okay, so this brings us to our integral estimation theorem statement, which says that if we meet the conditions of the integral test, then the remainder will be bounded between um, n plus 1 to infinity of f of x dx, okay, and less than or equal to the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx. Excuse me, this needs to be n plus 1 here. And then this is less than or equal to the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx. Okay, so we'll look at how we can apply this theorem to find some, some estimates or some bounds on some um, errors in, in estimating our sums um, in the next couple of examples.